Hello and welcome back to the Level Cap Podcast, where we sync up and otherwise. Yeah, is that like a fusion thing, you know, like sync up? Ha! Do the little finger motion here in real life, but you can't tell because this is the radio. Yeah, no, I did the thing where I like put my my fingers like that. Like I hope our fingers touched correctly, because otherwise we would become like emaciated or extremely fat. Well, we don't want any of that. Um, but hopefully, we watch enough DBZ to get it right. Yeah, definitely. So, Wait, is anyway, our fusion name like Breco? It'd be Breco or Marad. Mara. I think it's more more DBZ ish. Uh, I think Breco sounds way more DBZ ish, right? Breco, Breco, Breco might be like like GT era, yeah. Yeah, so. like a GT character or something. <laughs> yeah, our power would be. Here's the thing. See, as a correct fusion, that's correct, and not emaciated or um, severely fat. Um, our power is the fact that you are able to create characters and mechanics. And at the same time, I criticize them while you're making them. <laughs> that way, I see. I see. We get all that out of the way right at the front, and so <laughs> then the characters are uncriticizable once yeah. they get released. Yeah, because this is uh, who needs to test stunning breakthrough. Who needs to test if you criticize and test as you're making it, right? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Cut, I like it. Cut the middleman, and by the middleman, I mean the player. <laughs> Oh my that's, god! Uh, that's that's the whole point of reviews, right? Just take the player out of the equation. And I'll ah. tell you if the game is good or not without you playing it. And yes, follow me, sheeple. Follow me. So welcome back to the Level Cap Podcast, where we will have a wonderful docket for you today, tonight, or this afternoon. We will be talking about some games we've played. We'll be talking about a special character of the week that may or may not be related to synchronization. We will have questions, which will be answered. And we have a special ending segment for all of you. But for now, Brad, can you tell us, what have you been playing this week? Uh, This week, I... um. Let's see. Well, I finished up Danganronpa three. Um, I am just about to. Uh, I've been playing a little bit of Evil Within two, and um, I started uh, board games. I started Pandemic Legacy, and I started Gloomhaven. So a lot of legacy games recently. Ooh, man! I've been wanting to play some Gloomhaven, but like, uh, I just don't know if I can get enough people around the table consistently well, enough you can you can have them drop in and drop out like your characters are persistent but the world adjusts to the strength of your characters so and like higher level characters can just do more they aren't necessarily way strong i mean they're a bit stronger but they're not way stronger also like the level so, difference doesn't really affect like how what kind yeah. of challenges you can defeat i mean you can you can come into a dungeon with one level five guy and three level ones and it'll be still balanced around that Uh, in theory i haven't tried that yet but you could totally gandalf this (laughs) fly you fools oh my god oh my god so anyway um but that's uh but yeah it's it's pretty cool i'm uh i'm i'm happy with the with the game so far um it's pretty different from seventh cross which i'm happy about so um, I'm glad that uh, that I didn't uh, step on too many toes with that. I didn't accidentally steal a game. <laughs> well, it's uh, I mean, it's not technically stealing if you independently invent something, but I'm glad that it's still unique, right? Like that was always my fear is that I play another game and it'd be like, oh, this is just like what I've been working on for the past year. Um, I think all designers have that fear, but um, but it's not, so that's that's good. Oh, that's good. Okay, I was actually worried about that. Remember, a lot of people actually were commenting on the fact that. Uh, Seventh Cross sounded eerily like Gloomhaven. So. Well, I mean, just about any game where it's like, like you know, dudes fight monsters sounds like. I mean, Gloomhaven sounds like Descent, sounds like Mansions of Madness, sounds like Dungeons and Dragons, you know, which sounds like. I mean, these these games, you know, sounds like Mice and Mystics. It's all kind of genetically related to this uh, this dudes fight monsters idea. Okay, uh, that's okay, that's fair. But you know what? I, you know what I was talking about, like. Yeah, yeah. The diving, and I think like the the heavy focus on fifty percent story, fifty percent dungeon diving. Like I think that's what pe- got yeah. people to draw that comparison. Also, yeah. well, Gloomhaven is about is about ninety percent dungeon diving. Oh, really? Uh, there's a lot of yeah. It's 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 all fights. 
Oh, so it's Pathfinder. Fight, fight, fight. It's Pathfinder. All yeah, right. it's it's a lo- it feels a lot more like Pathfinder than anything else I've played. So uh, consider, consider that. Yeah. Um, how- but it does feel. But I guess we could we could talk about uh, Gloomhaven for our game of the week. Although you haven't played it yet. No, I haven't. So. I haven't. I haven't gotten people around the table. I haven't even bought the copy of the game. Um, because I'm too busy waiting for like my copy of Argent, my copy of Exceed. It's yeah. like I have all of these board games I haven't played yet. I can't afford to buy more. My addiction. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. Oh my gosh! Uh, By the way, speaking of which, how many people have pronounced it as a like, Gloomhaven? Like, like that character, even, like the like the character from The Simpsons, like how he says like Gloomhaven, like he, he say Gloomhaven. Uh, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's done that yet. I've done it, and oh, I have dude. unleashed that to the world. I guess. Only you. Oh my god. What have you been playing this week? Uh, so, what I've been playing this week has been really interesting because it was the it was our Game Club game for last week. Oh. I have been playing, been playing... a lot of Fantasy Strike. A lot oh, okay. of Fantasy Strike. But I'm not going to get into that. Instead, I'm going to get into another game I've been playing. Um, it's a game called Magic Maker. Have we talked about this game yet? Magic Maker? Is this where you make magic cards? Um, okay, close. Like, if you didn't say the last word, we would have been there. It's, it's a game uh, where you make a magic, Brad. And we... Well, yeah, I assume with Magic Maker, that's the kind of thing that you would do, right? Yeah, so so basically this is a game. Uh, it, it's, it's made in this, like, um, cut-out paper mache art style. It basically looks like South Park. The game looks kind of like uh-huh. South Park. Um, all the characters even, like, you know, they're like round headed on square bodies and all that stuff. So it kind of looks like South Park. Um, the game's interesting because what it lacks for in graphics or whatever, it makes up for some of the most creative gameplay I've ever seen. Um, the main deal of this game is that you're able to craft spells by mixing like one type of spell with another type of spell with a modifier here with a modifier there and you end up with some crazy crazy effects that's a sound pretty cool it yeah reminds me a bit of uh uh scribble knots kind of like scribble knots like it, it has scribble that kind knots, of feel but with magic but with magic effects. exactly like for example like so like you have base you have bases and then you can modify them with other spells so it's like huh it's like it's like an um you ever play transistor right like when you have one yeah. program you can have other programs modify it right yeah but yeah, you can yeah. also that sounds really cool yeah but in, in magic maker there's way more than just like seven quote unquote programs you have like a bunch of spells and you can slot in more than like one or two spells into the other spells so it goes yeah, crazy literal literally two million different spells to craft or something along those lines so it's like you get crazy stuff like there's a spell that's called like haste and it gives you movement speed or something like that but if you mix it in with the lightning spell it turns it into like this blink dash that leaves like a lightning shard behind so like there's a lightning trail when you do your blinks and then uh, some other spells are crazy like when you there's a spell that's called um, Replicate, and it causes duplicates of things to happen. So when you do Lightning Dash, and then you replicate it, you, you get something like you, you create after images of yourself. It's insane. Like, the amount of wow. mixing and matching with the spell yeah. is crazy. The, on the thing, it's like, how do I make exploding laser black holes that steal souls? Exactly. there's, like, a step-by-step process. There's a step-by-step. <laughs> and it's so fun because it's like, I think I made the I made a spell that was like it would shoot it would shoot a spell bolt that when it hits something it would explode into multiple other spell bolts all of which caused magnetism so they would drag enemies with them <laughs> it was and I think I made Okay, so I got to I got to try this. Maybe we should make this our game club game for next week. Oh my god, so I can try this and like, we can talk some more about it. Like it's this looks great. It's so fun. It's so great. Like you create eye lasers, lasers that bounce off walls and replicate, and whatever. It's it's a fun game. Like my biggest thing about it is that, um, it's it's not a long experience. We'll be finished with it in like three hours or something. But like finding all oh, the spells okay. is the fun part. Like like you will replay yeah. the game just to like try to beat a level with different spells. This is like this is like everything I was promised by Kirby years ago. <laughs> you should you should look into it. It's great, Magic Maker. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna check it out. That's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty well, cool. Um, well, cool. Well, um, well, let's get on to our character of the week this week. 
Oh, right. So speaking of synchronization and magic, none of that's related to our character of the week. And Brad, our character of the week this week is... Power Creep. Ooh. Can I compliment you on that uh, on that excellent aside, that excellent segue into Power Creep? <laughs> it's one, it's great, right? Like it's applicable and and it was seamless. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, Power Creep is our character for the week for this week, and uh, so yeah. So how about Power Creep? Um, Power Creep is a robot designed to play Millennium Blades. <laughs> um, but, it, but not just a not just a robot, I guess. Like pa- Power Creep, the one that you see in the game is the like the Power Creep platform. But the actual system is an AI, and it lives on the internet, and it's a virtual deck testing software. So like you can log on and you can battle Power Creep and test the power curve of your deck, and you know prepare for tournaments and stuff. Um, and so after testing so many decks, this uh, this the power creep this ai um is like playing millions and millions and millions of games of millennium blades and has gotten really good at it and plays so many games with so many players that to the point where it actually is a major part of the meta like it controls a portion of the meta game because everybody tests against it so if power creep thinks this is strong or thinks this is weak you know he will um he can he he adapts to those things and that adaption causes a ripple effect throughout the whole community I see, um, because everybody tests their decks against him, so what decks he decides to bring end up changing what people think is good or not. Right, yeah. Uh, so that explains and, his power. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, and then, like, when you when you go to tournaments, you meet, like, the, the mobile, you know, platform, power creep platform, which is the little robot on wheels that, uh, that gives you, that plays, that actually sits at the table and plays cards against you. Can Power um, Creep talk? Can Power Creep talk? Yeah, of course. Of course. He's got flavor text on his cards where he talks. I mean, like, he could just flash it on the screen or something. Like, I don't know. No way. He's got to have this cool robotic voice, like Johnny Five. Oh, my God. Yes, I am Power Creep. I don't know. I don't know how to make a good robot voice. Yeah, that's 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 exactly... That. You got it. You got it exactly. Oh, that's great. perfect. Canon. Canon. It's canon. If I, ever, if I ever need a Power Creep voice actor, I'll call you, Marco. Oh, yes. Excellent. Auditioning inside a podcast welcome to our podcast within the podcast auditioners um where brad and i audition to each other about voice acting roles um you can uh, you can pitch me that segment <laughs> okay oh my gosh okay so so that's power creep tell me though like every character in millennium blades is supposed to be a parody of a certain type of player or a certain concept in card games so what's like what's yeah. power creep all about is he actually just so power, power creep no, power, power Creep is the net decker. He's the character that, that goes online and gets the power deck list and assembles it and goes to the tournament and doesn't really like care about other aspects of the game. Like He's just there to to play the game uh, at the highest level. And that's his, that's his only interaction with it. He doesn't collect it or get involved with the culture or anything else. He's just, you know, like, like net deck, go to tournament, win, you know, uh, repeat. Uh, so that's the uh, that's the, the the kind of power player that um, that we're talking about. Hmm. This time. The player who is who is interested in the game purely from a statistical mechanical standpoint, right? I see. Um, there's nothing nothing wrong with it, but like Power Creep doesn't care what card is in his deck as long as it is good, you know, on the curve. Yeah. Okay, so he basically um, plays competitive Hearthstone or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's he's that kind of competitive player that is that is you know that's the statistical analyst type player and that's fun that's not wrong right like like if that's how you no, want to play the game right like it's i mean a lot of people get into it get into that kind of stuff and um you know that's uh especially in magic you see a lot of red players that that are very meticulous about calculating all the costs and curves and like damage outputs of the deck so that it can run extremely efficiently and and so that he's you know he's the kind of character that does that mm. is he like um, based off that like chess ai robot who can beat like grandmasters at chess, is he kind of like? Uh, yeah, he's kind of he's kind of based on that idea. Um, he's created by the uh, Universidade Tecnológica Ludus at um, in Portugal. Portugal is like the world technology leader in the world of Millennium Blades. Ah, so so, so and uh, so they're a futuristic sci-fi city or something. <laughs> not not quite sci-fi, but you know, little little bit pushing that. Um, 
but they have the best uh, they have the best uh, technology at least when it comes to card games and uh, so power creep is the result of all their research into trading card games okay so 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 they have the best technology in the one field where it actually matters children's card games yep pretty much pretty oh my much. goodness okay, so let's talk about mechanics so um if I remember correctly, Power Creep has two abilities and it fits into his story very well. His deck building ability allows him to essentially scrap the top card of any of the meta decks. That way he can control at least one of the metas, right? Like, mm-hmm. And he can peek ahead and learn what they are early during uh, deck building. Yeah, so, so he doesn't have to wait till halfway through the deck building phase to learn what the other metas are. Yeah, and that, that's really useful, right? Because he it basically means Power Creep can technically choose which cards are going to be quote unquote the best for the tournament and it's 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 very it's a very powerful power because you can also just end up messing everybody up because you can end up just discarding the top card of the whatever meta deck they were trying to go for because like one once one is revealed power creep power creep can just be like nah let's not <laughs> like you just change the meta from other people's head hands or noses or something, and then mm-hmm. some people end up wasting a lot of resources going for those meta cards, and suddenly this card that they spent, I don't know, 20 millennium bucks for, or whatever, is now useless, because it's no longer meta, because Power Creep just decided. Well, slightly, slightly less useful, but yeah, yeah, that's the that's sort of the idea is that you can sabotage the other players, or capitalize your own deck uh, in a better way, and um, his other ability is that he gets, um, as he plays to the meta, he gets more and more free points. So if he if water is the meta this week and he plays an entire deck of water cards, he scores way more points than other players would off of that uh, that meta. Um, you know, like, off of hitting that meta. Yeah, I believe he gets like four or five points every time he plays a card that's to the meta. So with like yeah. six cards in your tableau. So in the end of it all, uh, power creep so long as he sticks to the meta, actually ends up being one of the highest scorers in the tournament. Um, because he he's, get- he's he's good. He's a little, I think, Power Creep's, and Playtester told me, Power Creep's a little undertuned. Um, but he's very straightforward. Like, you know what you gotta do, and so you don't have to spend a lot of time setting up his ability. Like a character like Dex, who gets two deck boxes, that's a massive setup, and it's got a better payoff. But um, with Power Creep, you just, you, fig- you figure out the meta, you know, you pick the cards that best fit that, and then you can build your deck around it. So it's a very easy and like self-directed kind of deck building. You autopilot, um, basically. Score. You autopilot. Yeah, yeah. So he doesn't. I don't think he scores. He can, he can score a good bit, especially with the um, right accessories and stuff. Uh, but he doesn't uh, necessarily. He's not necessarily one of the higher scorers in the game. No, I think I think he's more of the. I didn't mean like high. Like I guess the word I was looking for was like consistent. He's like one of the most consistent scorers. Yeah, he's one of the he's one of the easiest to score consistent points with. Yeah, because not it's much like, can stop you from scoring those meta points. Yeah, like because because you get them. Like when you play the card, you get them. People can't do much about that. Like like in comparison, maybe this is just me like biased because I play Fulton a lot. Like Fulton, whatever. I play yeah, suitcase. Fulton. I play yeah. suitcase Kaiba a lot, and um. You know his his tournament power is basically blank most of the time. So, yeah, it's it's very he's very much more about deck building, yeah, um, than the other players are. So and uh, and the other characters like that too. They're they're so they they focus on one side or the other. Yeah, like Cardine, for example, who collects more. Yeah, he's more about yeah, and gets a lot of fusions at discount rates and stuff. Yeah, Power uh, Creep's really fun. Um, if you were to buff Power Creep, like what would you do? Like, would you make it like? Just increase one point or something every time he plays a card. Um, I don't know. I haven't. Uh, I haven't quite thought about it yet because um, I don't know that we're planning to. It's not like he's. It's, he's not like you know, like trash tier or anything. You know, he's he's if if all the players are playing optimally, Voco or not Voco, Power Creep <laughs> scores a little bit less than every than everyone else at their maximum scoring potential. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Brad, Brad, you're I was trying to say like he's not like Voco tier, <laughs> but then I, that, okay. Anyway, oh, poor um, he, but he's not he's not like Voco tier. He's probably he's just a little bit under the other characters. Yeah, but I think that's the ultimate irony. Then isn't it? <laughs> the ultimate I irony guess so. is that the character who's supposedly the one that plays the most powerful decks all the time. It's the weakest. Wait, is this some sort of like meta 
lesson narrative. Well, like I said, it's not weakness. It's just it's it's consistent low hanging fruit, right? Like you 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 risk less, you put in less effort. It means you can build more flexibly, but you um, you tend to score a little bit less on your character power. Yeah, so he's more consistent, just scores a bit less. Yeah, I, I mean, I think I would give him if it were me, um, I would give him something for the deck building phase because I think the the current like control the meta power uh, doesn't really stand up to um, like abilities like Fulton who gets extra money or um, decks who gets free cards that kind of thing. Huh. Like it's it's on the tier of Shur's ability, but Shur's like combat ability or uh like uh tournament, tournament power is much better than power creeps. So much better. So much better uh than than power so, creeps. Because it's like Yeah. Oh wait 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 wait. This is a cool segment. Let's kind of brainstorm let's kind of brainstorm what we would do for tournament. Well let's 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 talk about that in the in the in the later the later uh later portions of the show. Oh uh, okay fine. So that pretty much does it for me some ideas. <laughs> okay. Okay. That pretty much does it for our character of the week this week. If you guys want us to do a specific character of the week, please tell us in the comment section down below. We will get to that character as soon as possible. But Brad, tell me, are you ready to answer some questions? In our 99 questions, questions segment. 99 questions segment. Do you? Yeah. Do you what? Do you Brad? even ask questions? Um. Yes. Okay. Well, then ask them. All right. Okay. <laughs> I just read the question. What is this? What? Why do you not read the questions before we start? You could get yourself into a real jam that way, you know? No, no, no. You could no. get me into a real jam that way, you know? No, no, no. Brad, you have to understand. I was setting up a joke in the fiction of this podcast. Play with me, Brad. Play what? with me. Look, I was just pretending that I had just recently read the question because I wanted... Are you to... saying this podcast is just an elaborately staged work of fiction? Uh, why are you telling them, Brad? Stop. <laughs> Sorry, I mean, David, stop telling them. All right. Jeez, all right, David, all right. let's just oh, ask the question. so hard on this Marco and Brad characters. Why are, why are you spoiling them now? <laughs> okay. <laughs> So I just read this question. <laughs> I just read this question. Okay. Question number one. But only in fiction. You actually knew what the question yes, was. Yes, yes, yes. IRL. It, yes, IRL. I knew what this question was. Okay. Brad. I can't believe you just read this question just now, Marco. Yeah. What is it? Huh. Question number one. So. Oh man, that was great. Uh, 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 well, um, forty-two. <laughs> what am I doing? Why did somebody just submit a question that says "sup"? I mean, like, okay, I guess I'm fine. What's up with you? Why you... <laughs> the way you—that was—that's the question. That the question is just "sup," like S U P question mark. What? <laughs> 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 okay, maybe you should maybe you should select these questions a little more selectively. Oh my in god! In future selections, I didn't select this question. It's like th this isn't this isn't going to count to the three question limit. I just wanted okay. to point out the fact that one of our <laughs> listeners, given the mystical chance to get the questions answered by the CEO of Level Ninety Nine Games themselves, and they ask, "So." <laughs> 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 okay, let's on. Not let's much on. dog. Let's move on okay. to the real questions. <laughs> All right, number one: If you could develop any game and knew it would be funded a hundred percent, what kind of game would you make? Um, if I knew it would be funded a hundred percent, yep. Um, it would be a game which is a um. Which is the size of a house, okay. which you can live in with furniture prepackaged, and um, <laughs> you uh, and it's it's yeah, it's just a it's just a like a house. It's a it's a, an escape room house. Yeah, it's an escape and, room uh, house, and um, it's an escape room house. Yes, yes, I see. And the escape and room. after you after but after you, but unlike other escape rooms, which are destroyed. After you complete this escape room, you can just go on living in it because it's a house. 
<laughs> I see. And all of the obstacles are stuff like the mystical confounding golden toilet. Or <laughs> uh, I, I saw some some strange things. You know, it'd be it'd be fun. Like you'd still be discovering mysteries of your house years later. Mm. Right? So you're basically cool. you basically want a haunted house, is what you're saying. A magical haunted house. Well it's not have to be haunted. It could be a, a um you know, it could just be a mystery house. I see. It but, sounds uh, to me like you just want the house. <laughs> well, I mean, if if the shipping and the funding is all taken care of, right, wouldn't I just provide houses to everybody? That would be a great way to, you know, improve the world. That's a that's right? a very I mean, everybody needs a house. That's a very valid idea. It's a yeah, very so good idea. I just took a house, something I'd like to give everybody, a house, and I gamified it, and now it's funded 100%. So congratulations, all the listeners. You all get a house. <laughs> you get a house. You get a house. You get a house. All right. Um, if I could develop any game and knew it would be funded, what would it be? Um, obviously, I would make my dream passion project. Um a video game VR adaptation of um, Barbie and the Magic of the Unicorn, right? Um, it would be the most immersive Barbie experience. And it would... Im- <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't peg you for a, for a Barbie kind of guy, Mark. Oh, man. You, you got to understand, man. These Barbie movies... You're trying to you're trying to top my house. That's what it is. Um, I already picked a house. You have to pick something else. Oh, my gosh. Okay, what if I had a game... That apply it was it's an ARG okay it's an ARG, an alternate reality game wherein people aren't huge jerks to each other and you get um you progress by not being a huge jerk. This is like like the shadow internet where people aren't allowed to troll each other. Oh my gosh, is that even the shadow internet? Sounds like heaven to me. Well, yeah, I mean, it's the, if it was the internet we had, then it wouldn't be the shadow internet, but it's the internet we don't have, so it's got to be a secret underground. The internet we don't have, but don't deserve. Oh. Uh, that internet. I don't know, I feel, like, I feel like most people do deserve that internet. That's fair. I, I probably don't. I'm a horrible pun maker. Um, <laughs> let's move on to the next question. Um, yeah. Hey, Brad. Today we're recording this on December 1st, right? So that means Michael Buble has, like, woken up from his cryostasis, and the Christmas times are here, right? Who's who's that? Michael Buble, the singer who basically only sings Christmas songs. Oh, <laughs> like, I don't know. I, I, I'm, I don't follow Christmas music too much. Yeah, no, like, if you hear a Christmas song, like, when you hear Baby It's Cold Outside or something if it's a deep baritone voice it's most likely michael buble so if you're like in your local target or something and they play a christmas song with a baritone voice it's probably michael buble okay i see okay so this relates to this question what are your top three christmas songs that voco would sing the most Gosh, why are these questions so hard? Uh, they don't exactly have Christmas in Indians, so I don't know if they'll go to any these songs. There's no Christmas in uh, Indians? Oh, no, no wonder no, Rex no. wants they have to start different, a war. They have different holidays. They have different holidays because they have different religions. All right. But they all celebrate something around this winter time? Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's wintertime holidays. Um, I'd have to open up some of my really old lore books and stuff if I want to figure out what they are. Um, but uh, there's there's holiday songs, sure. And would uh, Voco sing any of them? Probably not. He'd probably have to make up some of his own. Probably a holiday song about how he'll kill you and rip your heart out and steal your heart magic. Something like that. I don't know. It sounds more like a Halloween song to me. Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, and then Spirit of maybe Giving. Like Grandma got run over by a reindeer. That kind of stuff. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe that would work. What if the sp- what if it's called the spirit of giving, and then vocals like you are giving your soul to me? <laughs> that's a bit uh, that that's that's a bit macabre, but I guess that would work. Yeah, okay. <laughs> the spirit of giving. Huh? Yeah, the spirit. Of- hey, Brad, you got you got to understand. You're the you, you. This character is yours. Okay, he's he is. I know, I know, mer- but I feel like I feel like he's uh, I feel like he's grown too powerful beyond my control. <laughs> Animator versus animation. <laughs> So, do you think yep. you, the creator, sometimes hide in fear of what you have made? Um, no, no. You gotta face boldly the things that you've done. I and uh, I have a few regrets. I won't lie. 
But uh, I know some creators who are afraid of their fans, and it's not a good way to live. Oh, man. So. We try not to be too bad for you, Brad. We try to be a good fan base. <laughs> All right. Not so much that. It's just like anything that you say or like any progression to a plot or development to a character will just like people don't want that. Oh, I see. You don't want to be JK Rowling is basically what you're saying. <laughs> Yeah, I guess that's a that's a fair way to put it. Oh my gosh. Okay, last question, Brad. Are you ready? This one's super, super relevant. Okay. Did you ever play Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the olden days? And what deck did you run? Yeah, I played Yu-Gi-Oh! back in the olden days. Um, at the, my, my last deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! was a direct damage stealth bird deck. What is the stealth uh, bird? Oh, I, oh man, is this like it's a card that you can flip up and down over and over again. Each time you flip it, it does a thousand damage. Okay, that uh, sounds atrociously funny. Yeah, and then I got you know the traps like uh, Curse of Darkness, and you know like if you play spell, you take a thousand damage. If you play a creature, you take a thousand damage. You know uh, that kind of stuff. And then uh, a bunch of like you know Book of the Dead to recur your stealth birds over and over again. Yeah, it was around the Pharaonic Guardian time that I got out of it. Oh, uh, but I used to have like an entire first edition set of the Blue Eyes White Dragon set. Oh, the first expansion. How, you can't have that. Kaiba ripped one of them. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm only missing one Exodia piece. Oh. It's kind of a shame. <laughs> oh, that's so sad. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I have the non. I have the unlimited version of that Exodia piece. I just don't have the first edition version. Do you still have it now? Uh, I think it's like somewhere in my old like boxes of stuff from my childhood back in North Carolina. Oh man, that's great! Oh, that's great. yeah. Maybe someday it'll be worth something. I don't know. Uh, who knows? Uh, who knows what if it secretly has the part of the cards and actually summons dual spirits? Who knows? Uh, well, I know because I own the cards and it doesn't. I'm sorry, I tried that already. Are you sure? Are you sure though? What if it's real it's and you just, just like didn't in believe? the show? Well, I didn't have one of those dual decks, so maybe that's what it was. Maybe that is what it was. Um, I played Yu-Gi-Oh back in those days. Um, ha. Huh. I mean, like, in the early 2000s, my deck was, like, that Freonic Guardian deck where, like, you would flip him face up and he would bounce things. So all of my decks were, like, oh, Book of yeah. Tayus and Book of the Moons, and then I would flip stuff and bounce people all the time, right? Mm-hmm. That, was the de- yeah. that was the deck that I ran in the 2000s, but I played Yu-Gi-Oh! way beyond that, uh, but I migrated from physical Yu-Gi-Oh! to uh, video game Yu-Gi-Oh! So mm-hmm. I would play, like, do the... Like I would play the PS Vita games. I would play the the browser one. There's like a free Yu Gi Oh browser game that you can just play, and it has all the cards and it's rule enforced mm. and everything. I'm not sure if it's legal, but yeah, <laughs> it's yeah, um, it's pretty great. Uh, I played in that one. I played um, so so at some point in Yu Gi Oh's meta, right? It became like everybody would special summon seven things in one turn and then kill you. Like that's basically how Yu Gi Oh became at some point. Yeah, yeah, I remember this day. That's about. I feel like that's about the time I quit. Yeah, so around that time, I was still trying to play, and I was really frustrated with that, because it's like every deck in their mother's deck basically ran special summon seven things, and then you die, or something like that, right? Um, so I ran a Emperor um, deck. Oh, I forget, Caesar deck. I, don't, I forget what their archetype is called, but there was an entire archetype where they were all named after Roman emperors. So like Cassius uh-huh. and Caesar and something like that. And the entire deck was just focused on normal summons. Because I'm a Johnny and I like I like playing off color, off meta stuff. And I like doing cool combos. So I had an entire deck that was in, in a meta filled with like special summon decks. I was playing a deck that focused only on normal summons and it was pretty fun. Um Yeah. And that was It's always fun to to go against the grain. Try something that nobody else is playing at the moment. Yeah, I guess I guess the fun of card games. But it, it, yeah, and I guess that's what eventually, like, I got out of Magic and stuff, because I felt like the, um, like, there were not enough viable archetypes outside of the main meta. But I guess that's just true as you get into competitive. Like, the the space becomes researched so quickly that, like, it, non-viable archetypes get discarded. Yeah. And there's not a lot to discover. That's like Hearthstone. Like, as soon as you, a new Hearthstone set comes out, it's immediately solved. Like, all the, everybody knows all the curves for all the cards, what's good and what's not. Yeah, and there's not a lot of room to discover anymore. I think it's, but that's if enough player people are playing a game, that just um, happens, and right? If people care about enough about it. Yeah, like there's no, there's no real protection against that. Protection against white. Um, but like, I think that's that's my my deal. Like that's the best part of card games, 
is 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 figuring those decks out and like f- just having fun with them man like 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 at some point if you play a card game just to win personally speaking that's great but who really wins like if you like like to me a win is when i make a cool looking deck and i do something really stupid and it works like sure my win rate's like what 50 55% compared to possibly the 80% win rate if i just ran this op deck that would one shot people but like what's the fun in that like to me right like yeah i mean like yeah there was a they released a new set in duelist really recently uh, like 2 weeks ago and they released two new cards that made stuff really fun um because one of those cards is a piece of equipment it's a weapon just think of it like a hearthstone weapon uh that says every time you cast a spell draw a card so it's gadget sand auctioneer as a weapon and then there was another card they released it's a seven mana four seven and the effect is all your spells cost two less mana um (laughs) so yeah i mean i don't i don't follow the duelist or magic these days so i don't uh... oh my gosh I don't know. I don't know too well what it is, what's going on. I know oh. there's a um a new. I think it's uh what's the new unset? It's coming out next weekend. Um, um Hearthstone. Like, unset. No, in Magic, unset okay. three is coming out this weekend. Oh man, I haven't been keeping tabs on Magic. So. You know why, Brad? Why? Because my wallet is empty. <laughs> I see. <laughs> From buying well, all your games. I don't have any uh any uh. I don't have anything to offer you there. I'm sorry. Oh my gosh, you could give me games oh, for free. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh my gosh. I, mean, oh. I cover your game club game of the month, or the game club game of the week for these games. Yeah, that's fair. Oh, speaking of which, we should probably end this segment. If you guys have a question for us and want us to answer some of your questions, please, 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 please. You are given this mighty power to ask, like, like a big name in the board games industry. Do not send sup as a question like you're free to i mean you can I mean, you can but you should filter it marco yeah. it's not on them to not ask questions it's on you to filter them. Yeah, yeah yeah i mean of course i mean like look there's look i didn't even tell you this but like before the sup somebody just typed in asd asd as like a separate right. question right i want to i want to share a new segment with you it's called marco blames the audience <laughs> 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 where where we talk about all the things that 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 maybe are your fault, but they're not. They're the audience's fault. <laughs> hey, to be fair, because... look, the sub thing was just supposed to be a joke. Uh, <laughs> my gosh. Anyway, let's let's move on. This is all this is all my fault. See there, Brad. I can take responsibility for my actions. Yep, pretty much. Oh my gosh. Okay, Brad. Can we go That's to much le- better? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. All right. Let's go to the last segment. The last segment, Brad, is our ever wonderful pitch, where you and I pitch each other a new segment because we can't think of redoing the old ones. Every week. Yeah. I well, not every. I week. can't think of it. It's too painful. <laughs> it, does it actually physically hurt you to think of it, Brad? Yeah. Some some way in some way. Yeah. Uh, well. Sometime. Oh my gosh. Okay. So. Every Not every week, but some weeks, Brad and I will propose a new segment. And you, the wonderful listeners, will be able to vote and pick what segment we should do the following week. For this week, Brad and I are going to introduce some new segments. So are you ready for my segment, Brad? Uh, yeah, go for it. Okay. So I'm going to give you a small preview. And I think we already touched on this earlier a bit. But here's the best. Here's my new segment. It's called... Kickstart to the stars. In this segment, we will basically make up a really atrocious Kickstarter crowdfunding project. Okay? And basically, we would ask people what they would back. And um, I already thought of one. You don't have to think of one for this week, Brad. But here's my Kickstarter idea. And here's the thing. I'm absolutely sure it will get funded. You know why, Brad? Because it's guaranteed 100% funded. No, no, it's previous. No, but in this segment, it's not 100% guaranteed funded. Like we have to actually uh-huh. make an idea that might actually get funded. You know? uh, right. That's the see, point. I can 100% guarantee that my project would be hypothetically funded. Ah, uh, okay. So, there okay. You, go. you, I see. You've trapped me in a Xenosis paradox. Hmm. 
I guess I'll die then. Okay, no, but seriously, I'll. Um, my my idea is the only way to to win is not to play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nuclear warfare. Okay, okay. Here is my Kickstarter idea. Do you think it'll? Then you tell me if you think it will get backed, Brad. You've had a okay. lot of experience with this, so so you'll know. Okay, here's my idea. Mini minis is what it's called. So this is a miniatures game where in the board where you put the miniatures on is also a miniature. And in this game, you and the opponent are traversing this miniature, which is big. So it's a big miniature. Okay? So I guess it's a... Well, that's, kind of a that's kind of an oxymoron. Yeah, it's a big miniature. I guess it's a regular. <laughs> okay. Okay, and you and your friends are trying to vie over control of this miniature's various parts using your other miniatures, which are all anime in aesthetic. So aside from this, what this are... sounds like a this sounds like a Shadow of the Colossus board game with miniatures. Exactly, um, and a regular. But the Colossus. I know this will get funded. I know this will get funded, Marco, because the Attack on Titan board game already did, and it works exactly like that. Oh come on! Oh, <laughs> no! Ruined. Ruined. <laughs> oh my god! You know, I actually for half a second there, I was about to go whoa because I thought you were gonna say Marco. I'm 100 percent sure it's gonna get funded because it has miniatures. Oh. No, <laughs> although that that too is a is a factor. Oh um, my gosh! Oh okay. man! Oh man! All right. Yeah. Okay. What's okay, let's think about my my Kickstarter proposal for you next week. <laughs> well, um, hey, that's only if my segment wins. If your segment's significantly better than my my apparently pirated stolen IP idea, huh. <laughs> what's yours? What's yours? Yep. What's your segment, Brad? Although that gives me another idea for another one. Uh, but my my main idea is something we actually touched on a little earlier as well. Um, so I want to call this segment uh, "Rebalanced," and this is a serious segment. Or we talk about how we would fix um, any balance issues in um, our games or other games or even online games that we both play. Um, That's awesome. I think so. It'd be like yeah, like a, just a regular balance discussion for huh. um, you know for projects. You want to give a small preview to our listeners? Um, well, we talked a little bit about power creep uh, already, so it would kind of be more. We would extend that discussion into its own segment. That would be pretty cool. Actually, I think I yeah. vote for yours, cause cause I think my <laughs> segments is gonna be like, uh, let's kickstart a shoe that is also a game, a game shoe that's full of potato salad <laughs> and miniatures, <laughs> and, and and um and risque anime girls, yes, yeah, on top of a uh, on top of a uh, exploding kitten, uh, and 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 here's the most important part, it's an artisanally made board game from Sweden. Designer oh, important part, board but game. Okay. Designer okay. board game, Brad. Designer 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 board, board game. It's it's avant garde. It's art. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's minimalist too and you know like the Kickstarter video is is like um no 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 audio or whatever and it's like on a table the board game's there and some hands are messing with it and there's like smooth like dun, 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 but you know what's not minimalist what's not minimalist is the price which is in euros <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh and it's... well actually it'd be like it'd be krona if it was from sweden wouldn't it but that's basically same uh, same it's basically similar are they, I, don't I don't know. I don't actually know the exchange. Euros? I don't actually know off the top of my head the exchange rate between Krona and Euros. You know we can Google Sorry. Magic of the Internet, Brad. <laughs> Krona to Euro. So one Swedish Krona is point one Euro. So it's a one is a ten. Oh, okay. So like a dime. Okay. Well, actually, yeah. Is and it's twelve cents. Okay. Okay. Anyway, this off back to back to topic. These are the segments you can <laughs> oh. you can we can have a real balanced discussion, or we can talk about about wacky kickstarters. Oh wait, Brad, there's a third segment that we just came up with right now. Our bur- our, our our middle ground segment, uh, where Brad and exchange I talk rates. about <laughs> exchange rates. <laughs> yes, the fi- financial. We can also do a financial advice segment. <laughs> the forex segment. 
<laughs> like you want to invest, you want to invest in in Chronos right now because a lot of good Swedish board games are coming out in the near future. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> One based around Grow your money before the Kickstarters start. <laughs> oh my gosh! By the way, if if that like sneaker game shoe potato salad thing got made, like what would it be called? Um, it'd probably be called like sneaker game shoe potato salad thing, but abbreviated like with dots. So like, <laughs> like. S G S, you know, uh, oh, P P S, and like or like agents of S P or and, you know, like. Oh my god! Can we? <laughs> okay, that's it. End this episode. Oh my gosh! Thank you so much. Okay, okay, everyone, for listening to this Level Cap podcast. This was sorry, a- I broke Marco. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Brad broke me so many times this episode. Oh, uh, with the vocals and with the. Sh- Agents of the SKR. <laughs> oh, no. oh, it's everything I All love right. about crowdfunding and more. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys for listening this week's Level Cap podcast. I am your other host, D. Brad Tout Jr., um, joined by your main host, Margo DeSantos. Also known as and, Organic uh, <laughs> and we're signing off. So have a great evening and uh, play more BattleCon online. Happy gaming. And. Please do not forget your four special action. Thank you for all the endings. Thank you, and good night. <laughs> <laughs>